Today we are going to study a very interesting chapter, Refraction at Plane Surfaces. You know what happens when a light ray strikes a glass slab? Exactly what path does it follow? Let's find out. You see when a light ray strikes a glass slab or for that matter, you know, any medium which is different from vacuum, it undergoes refraction. That is, it gets deviated from its original path. So this light ray, you know, which was incident at an angle theta 1 with respect to the normal at the surface is now traveling such that it forms an angle theta 2 with the normal. And you can even calculate the deviation of the light ray. The deviation is clearly theta 1 minus theta 2. So exactly, you know, what laws does the light ray follow when it gets deviated while passing through another medium? Let's find that out. There are two main laws of refraction, as you already know. Refraction is the bending, you know, or the change in the path of the light ray when it encounters a different medium. Here's the first law of refraction. The light ray in the two media and the normal to the interface surface at the point of incidence lie in the same plane. The ratio of the sine of the angles made by the light ray in the two media with the normal to the interface surface at the point of incidence remains constant for a given pair of medium. Now you know all these heavy words seem to be pretty confusing. Like what exactly are the laws of refraction? Let's understand using some pictures and animations. Let's consider this glass slab. Now when a light ray strikes this glass slab, it gets refracted like this. The first law of refraction states that the incident ray, the refracted ray and the normal at the point of contact, all of them lie in the same plane. This is very important. The second law of refraction says that if you know the incident ray is striking like this and the refracted ray is passing through the second medium like this, then the angle theta 1 and theta 2 will be such that sine theta 1 by sine theta 2 will be constant for a given pair of mediums. So you know if you take air and glass then for them this angle sine theta 1 by sine theta 2 will always be a fixed quantity like no matter what else is happening in this world. In fact this ratio sine theta 1 by sine theta 2 as you might already have studied in class 10th is called mu the refractive index for a pair of media. So if the light ray is coming from medium 1 into medium 2 the refractive index will be 1 mu 2. 1 mu 2 will represent the refractive index of medium 2 with respect to 1. So if medium 1 is air and if medium 2 is glass, you know sine theta 1 by sine theta 2 will represent the refractive index of glass with respect to air. Okay. In fact, this particular law which states that sine theta 1 by sine theta 2 is constant is called Snell's law as you might already have heard. When we say 1 mu 2 equal to mu 2 by mu 1, we mean that you know the refractive index of 2 with respect to 1 is equal to the refractive index of 2 divided by the refractive index of 1 with respect to vacuum. So mu 1 represents the refractive index with respect to vacuum and mu 2 represents the refractive index of this medium 2 with respect to vacuum. So if you say that this is air here and this is glass here, in that case, you know, A mu G, that is the refractive index of glass with respect to air, will be sin I divided by sin R. You know, where I is the angle of incidence with which the light ray is incident on the glass slab and R is the angle of refraction in the glass slab. And this will be equal to mu glass divided by mu air where mu glass is the refractive index of glass with respect to vacuum and mu air is the refractive index of air with respect to vacuum. So you know mu glass represents the refractive index when a light ray from vacuum is incident on the glass slab and mu A represents the refractive index when a light ray from vacuum you know is incident in air. So this is something you'll have to understand and remember that A mu G will be sin I by sin R which will be equal to mu g by mu a. Understood? If yes, then let's proceed. There was this one scientist called Huggins and you know, he researched more on this phenomenon of refractive index like exactly what does sin theta 1 by sin theta 2 represent physically and things like that. What Huggins found out was that 
we say that 1 mu 2 is sin theta 1 by sin theta 2 this is also equal to c1 by c2 he found this out by experimentation you know that sin theta 1 by sin theta 2 is equal to the speed of light in medium 1 divided by the speed of light in medium 2 so what he found out was that you know if we are talking about the refractive index of glass with respect to air which is equal to the refractive index of glass divided by the refractive index of air then this is also equal to the speed of light in air divided by the speed of light in glass isn't that interesting Huggins found this out now we've hardly you know started this chapter we've just started studying it but we are already ready to solve an IIT J problem so let's solve it this question was asked in IIT J 1999 oh it's a large question you know a lot of data and details the XY plane is the boundary between two transparent media medium 1 with Z greater than or equal to 0 has a refractive index of root 2 and medium 2 with Z less than or equal to 0 has a refractive index root 3 a ray of light in medium 1 is given by the vector this particular vector this is incident on the plane of separation find the unit vector in the direction of refraction in medium 2 oh this question has actually complicated such simple concepts that we just learnt in the question you know the vectorial representation of the incident ray is given and we have to find out you know the unit vector in the direction of the refracted ray I am sure this will really explore the core concepts of refraction let's see how to proceed in this problem